Welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to learn about reinforcement learning. We will cover from basic to advanced concepts. Let's begin with an overview of the three main types of machine learning. Supervised, unsupervised, and reinforcement learning. In supervised learning, the algorithm learns from labeled data. It's given input-output pairs and learns to predict the output for new inputs. For example, predicting house prices based on features like size, location, and number of rooms. In unsupervised learning, the algorithm learns patterns from unlabeled data. It finds structure or relationships in the data without explicit guidance. For example, clustering customers into groups based on their purchasing behavior. In reinforcement learning, an agent learns to make decisions by interacting with an environment. It receives feedback in the form of rewards or penalties for its actions. For example, a robot learning to navigate a maze and reach the goal. Reinforcement learning is inspired by behavioral psychology. It's about learning what actions to take in different situations to maximize a cumulative reward. Here are the key components of reinforcement learning. The learner or decision maker. The robot in our case is called an agent. The agent interacts with the environment. Maze is the environment in our case. The current situation of the agent is called state. In our example, the position of the robot is the state. An agent can make decisions. Like in our case, robot can move forward or backward, turn left, or turn right. Basically, the decision made by the agent is called an action. After the agent takes an action, it gets feedback from the environment, which is called a reward. If our robot moves to the next position, it may get positive feedback for finding the exit and negative feedback for hitting walls. And lastly, the policy. Policy is the strategy the agent employs to determine actions. Now we understand all the key points. Let me explain the reinforcement learning process. First, the agent observes the current state of the environment. Our robot observes its current position. Based on this state, the agent chooses an action. Our decides to move forward, turn left, or turn right. Then the environment transitions to a new state. Once our robot ends up in a new position in the maze, the state of the agent robot is changed. Based on the new state transition, the environment provides a reward to the agent. So, our robot gets feedback from the environment, either positive or negative. This process repeats until a terminal state is reached, means the robot reaches the exit or a maximum number of steps is reached. That is the process of reinforcement learning. But there are challenges in this process. One of the key challenges in reinforcement learning is balancing exploration, trying new actions to gather information, and exploitation, using known good actions to maximize reward. In our maze, the robot tries a new path it hasn't taken before. That is exploration. And when the robot follows a path it knows leads to the exit, that is exploitation. Okay. But how can we solve the problem of balancing exploration and exploitation? Let's talk about it. Most RL problems are formalized as Markov decision processes. An MDP is defined by set of states, S, set of actions, A, transition function, P, reward function, R, and discount factor, gamma. In our maze example, all possible positions of the robot in the maze are set of states. The set of actions are move forward, move backward, turn left, turn right. The transition function is the probability of ending up in a new state, given the current state and action. The reward function is the points awarded for each move, for example, plus one for each correct step, minus one for each wrong step, minus 10 for hitting a wall, and plus 100 for reaching the exit. And finally, the discount factor is the value placed on future rewards. For example, the reward on the first step from the starting point is 0.1, which increases with each correct future position. Now that we understand the balance between exploring new options and exploiting known good choices, you must be wondering, how does our agent actually determine what's a good choice? How does it decide when to explore and when to exploit? This is where we need to introduce two crucial concepts in reinforcement learning, value functions and policies. All right. Let's imagine we're building a deep learning system for our maze-solving robot. We'll explore two main approaches, value learning, specifically Q-learning, and policy learning, using policy gradient methods. Both use neural networks, but in different ways. 
In Q-learning, we're trying to learn the Q function, which tells us the expected future reward for taking a specific action in a specific state. Q function is an expected future reward when taking action in state S. Here is how we can use deep neural networks to model Q functions. There are two ways we can structure the network. One is we could have the state and the action as inputs to our system, and then we get a Q value as an output for that state action pair. That is a single number as an output. And another way is to only feed in a state as an input, and the model will learn a Q value for each of the possible actions and return the Q value for each of the actions. Here's how we might implement this with a deep neural network. In the training process, the network initializes with random weights, and for each training step, it observes the current state S and chooses an action. Uh, then take the action, observe reward R and new state S, and then calculate the target Q value and the loss, and finally backpropagate this loss and update the network weights. Now, let's look at the policy gradient method. In policy gradient methods, we directly learn the policy pi which gives us the probability of taking each action in a given state. Similar to the Q-learning, the training process of the policy learning starts with initializing the network with random weights, and for each training step, it calculates the return, some of discounted rewards from that step onward, and calculates the loss, and finally backpropagate the total loss and update the network weights. The intuition here is that we're increasing the probability of actions that led to good outcomes and decreasing the probability of actions that led to poor outcomes. As we wrap up, I want you to imagine the possibilities. Imagine robots that can adapt to any environment, AI that can solve complex real-world problems, or systems that can learn and improve without human intervention. All right, that's it for today's video. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more deep dives into machine learning algorithms. If you have any questions or topics you'd like us to cover next, leave a comment below. Until next time, keep exploring. I'll see you in the next video.